In the last few days, there have been many tributes to Sir David from politicians of all parties, from his constituents and members of the public, from friends and from family, and from faith leaders, especially the Catholic Church, of which he was such a devoted follower. Each tribute paints its own picture of a committed public servant, of kindness, and of a man whose decency touched everybody that he met. Taken together, these tributes are a powerful testimony to the respect, the affection, and yes, the love that David was held in across politics and across different communities. Together, they speak volumes about the man that he was and the loss that we grieve. Sir David was a dedicated parliamentarian and his loss is felt profoundly across this House. We are united in our grief at this terrible time. We are thinking of David and his family. We are thinking, once again, of our dear friend Joe Cox, who was killed just five short years ago. And I know that honourable members and their staff will have spent the weekend worrying about their own safety. The emotion is the same across the House. But I remember just how acutely Joe's loss was felt on these benches. So today, on behalf of the entire Labour Party, I want to lean across, to reach across, and to acknowledge the pain that's felt on the opposite benches. And I do. Yeah. Of course our differences matter. After all, that's what democracy is about. But today we're reminded that what we have in common matters far more. I spoke to Joe Cox's parents on Friday afternoon because I knew that they would be reliving that terrible day. They said to me they were thinking of David's family and how their lives would be changed forever. So today, just as the Prime Minister has said, this House holds in our hearts David's wife, Julia, his children, Catherine, David Jr, Sarah, Florence and Alex, and all of those who loved him. We cannot begin to imagine what they're going through, but our thoughts, our love and our prayers are with them. I also thank those who did everything they could to save David's life and our emergency services, who run towards danger to protect us. And I just want to take a moment to think about, for all of us to think about, David's staff uh, and what they must be going through. This parliament that David loved so much has lost one of its finest advocates. His colleagues have lost a dear friend, and the people of South End have lost one of their own. Sir David was a dedicated constituency MP. When I visited South End on Saturday, I was struck by the affection and the regard that he was held in by everybody I met. He rejected ministerial office to focus on South End, and we remember his historic battle to see it given city status. And I'm so pleased at the announcement the Prime Minister has just made. It is a fitting tribute to Sir David's hard work. It really is. Fitting because David delivered on the causes he championed. He cared about them. He passed a bill that forced action on fuel poverty. He paved the way for better standards of fire safety and delivered protections for animal welfare. And no tribute has emerged in recent days that resonates more vividly than that of his former parliamentary staffer, Edward Holmes. As he was in his first job out of university, Holmes forgot to tell Sir David about an urgent call that the then Prime Minister, David Cameron, had made. He said he felt terrified until he finally plucked up the courage to tell David, whose response was typical. Don't worry about that, Edward. So relaxed was David that Mr Holmes says he suspects he never actually called the Prime Minister back. 
That tells a politician who had his priorities right. <laughs> One who put his people before his party and his patch before his personal advancement. Even as a political opponent, he was a man and a politician we can all learn so much from. I use that phrase, political opponent, very deliberately, because David held his beliefs passionately, but gently. And I believe that not only can we learn from that, but we have a duty to learn from that. Amen. Civility matters, and it matters in politics. We must not lose sight of the fact that David's killing was an act of terror in our country. We can't help today but think of Joe Cox, Andrew Pennington, and PC Keith Palmer, who lost his life defending all of us in this place in 2017. And we thank God that the Honourable Member for East Ham is with us in the Chamber today. Yeah. And that the Honourable Member for West Lancashire's would-be attackers were stopped in their tracks. Yeah. And I know that politicians across the country, across this House, have their own experiences of threats to their security. Today is a chance to remember David. But in the weeks and days to come, we must confront the threats and violence that everyone faces in acting this country's democracy. It's too early for us to comment on the exact motivations and circumstances of David's killing. But I do want to finish by saying this. A cowardly attack on a public servant doing his job is an attack on our country and on our way of life. Yeah. A way of life that prizes tolerance, democracy and respect, that accepts our differences but cherishes our commonalities, that refuses to succumb to the poison of extremism. No matter what perverted cause faith or ideology these attackers support, their intention is always the same, to sow division amongst us. And that's why our response must always be to show that we will never be cowed, that our bonds to one another can never be eroded, that the hatred that took Sir David's life will never win. Our democracy is precious. It's held firm against many tests, but it's also a fragile, living thing. Let us use the memory of Sir David's life and his passions to nourish it, to recommit ourselves in standing for the things that he stood for, the things that extremists will never comprehend, for decency in our disagreements, for kindness in our hearts, for our great democracy, and for the hope that through it we can make our country and our world a better place.